It's so quiet in here. <laughs> hey! So Chris was like last in line, so very selfless. I have some single, some words, how I would describe Chris Myers. Not necessarily in this order. Vision. Structure. Spark. Selflessness. Brave. And expectations. give you a little background with my history with Chris. I've known Chris for 18 years being involved with the truth. But Chris and I really go way back. When I was the dining hall steward in 1984, Chris was scoutmaster of Troop 438 and brought his troop up to camp. For those of you that have been to summer camp, you know the dining hall steward is a very uh, vocal person. And I was vocal then, as well as now. So then Chris remembered me, that kind of made an impact. Years later, Chris worked with my mom at the Weston Hotels. And of course our last name is what really um, differentiated from everybody else. So he, he grew up knowing the four, he knew the family. Fast forward to when we were in Cub Scouts back 633, we had a blue and gold dinner, and it wasn't uh, our son Corey's blue and gold dinner yet, it was another year out. But Chris came to the uh, Cub Scout pack for the blue and gold dinner, and that was one of the first times we got reacquainted. And he saw my name on the program and thought, because I was Cub Master then, and recognized that from working with my mom and then putting that relationship back on uh, summer camp staff. Of course, a few years later, we joined Troop 438, and during that time, uh, I was a mayor badge counselor and Chris's committee chair for about 13 years, so we got to know each other pretty well. But the one thing I wanted to share with you is what Chris does outside of Troop 438. Chris is known up at Camp Parsons as one of those career scoutmasters that is very involved and has high expectations for his uh, Camp Parsons staff when they interact with him. Chris has come up with me since 2010 to adult work parties. And Camp Parsons has formal adult work parties where they feed us and we go out and do work. And Chris and I used to go up on Saturday morning and come back Saturday night. And if you remember the 30th, if some, some of you were there, the last photo was Chris sleeping in my passenger seat in my truck on the way back home. And he still does that now at times. But we've evolved and we figured it's, it's easier to drive up on a Friday night and stay till Sunday so we're not so exhausted or tired. 
But Chris has uh, worked on quite a few work parties with me coming to camp. And Chris has started a legacy up there. And it started back in 2015, uh, actually 2014, when the troop uh, adults that were at summer camp decided that the campsite we always stay in, Rangers campsite, needed a second floor. They used to have one at one time and it was taken out because of safety. And that was one of these projects that uh, Chris was really involved with and spearheaded. That's where I come from with the spark, is that Chris really set that expectation working with a few adults, rallied adults from our troop, and we started working on that project all spring. Chris has a ton of other projects involved in that campsite and at Camp Parsons. Uh, after that year, we worked on Joe's Cook Shack. Some of you may remember that. We also built a uh, adult uh, shelter there at uh, Camp Parsons. And as we were up there one summer and the boys were running around us during summer camp, we decided we needed some place for the adults to be off to the side, but still be able to view the scouts. So we built a shelter with a covered porch so we can set up lounge chairs and be able to, to view what's going on, but out of the way of the dust. For some of you that didn't camp, you know how much dust there is. Some of the other projects that Chris is well known for in Chris's group with the adults is to date we have built seven lean-to shelters in camp. And those are shelters, uh, the smallest is about 16 by 21, the largest is 20 by 42 feet. These shelters are in campsites and in some of the program areas. And these shelters are allow the staff to be able to work and teach merit badges when the weather uh, if it's raining, um, they're out of the cover, and it's also used for off-season uh, off use for different programs like Order the Arrow um, or Wood Badge. And so that's really enhanced uh, Camp Parsons and, and utilizing that as their goal is going to be year-round camp. We just finished the seventh shelter this weekend. Unfortunately, Chris wasn't there to, make, to help us out, but we know he was there in spirit. That kind of leads me to one of my other things with Chris. For those of you who didn't know or have gone camping with him, He's a big coffee drinker. And the last couple of years, he'll come up on Saturday morning, and he knows where we're staying. He comes up, leaves the house at 4.30, gets up to camp about 6.30 in the morning, and first thing he does is brews coffee for us, so when we're waking up, we've got coffee ready. So. I suck at that, because we didn't have any uh, Saturday morning. So we missed you. Chris has also been known to deliver coffee uh, in your tent while you're still in your sleeping bag on camp house. So it's always a nice treat. One of the things Chris really sets with the troop when we were shopping for, for Boy Scout troops is he really sets a tone of family, commitment, expectations. He has a structure in his troop that everybody follows and he brings in like-minded families. Those families that want that structure, want that discipline, but have a chance to succeed. And I think Joe will talk about it later, but he's had a pretty high success rate with Eagle Scouts in this troop during his 40 years, uh, well above the average for national. And that's not to say any other troops are good, bad, or indifferent, but I think that's one of the unique things and that consistency that Chris brings to Troop 438. So Chris, we really uh, appreciate everything you've done over the years. We'll continue to appreciate you and enjoy the time we're able to spend with you. Congratulations. Thank you all for uh, coming out to celebrate Chris's 40th uh, anniversary. Uh, it's quite uh, an achievement. Um, it's been a really pleasure working with uh, Chris. So we also have special guests here. We have his son, Justin, his uh, Justin's wife, Rosie, and his grandson, Micah. And we also have his wife, Pam. And uh, I wanted to thank his family for providing him all the support. And because without your support, there's no way that he could actually lead a troop for 40 years. So thank you guys very much. I really appreciate the sacrifice. So uh, before I get into more details about Chris, I wanted to also thank uh, the parents who uh, worked hard to make this event occur. Uh, so 
last October, uh, I don't know, they told me, hey, it's Chris's 40th anniversary, we should have some, a party for him. So I said, sure, we'll do something small, we'll have a thing of a cake at the church. Um, but then I saw the, a video and they showed me, hey, this is what we did for his 30th, we had a big <laughs> get together. And I was like, uh, all right, I'm okay for that. But the group that led creating this event, they wanted to have something for him sooner than later. So we actually had two celebrations, and the first celebration was kind of like a head fake. To kind of say, okay, we'll just give you a very nice plaque, by the way, and a nice cake, and happy 40th, okay? But they're adamant about having this thing. And I wasn't really for it. I was just giving Diet Coke and say, have a nice time. <laughs> Plus, I had to do two speeches, so okay, so all right. I'll, I'll do that for you, Chris. So you're well worth it. But uh, the, the people, the parent support we get from this troop is amazing. When I joined, I always found it strange how we had all these parents involved in our meetings. And it wasn't parents from the current scout. It was parents that had scouts that were like 20 years gone, and they still showed up to our meetings. So I was just amazed, and I didn't understand it at first. But the more I spent time with Chris, the more I spent time with the troop, I realized that your passion for scouting is basically contagious, and it's a lot of fun. And so I can see why parents continue on, and some of the older scouts continue on. I remember one time we went uh, on a snow trip to build igloos, and a scout, we actually didn't go to a normal spot. We kind of just went off the trail at some spot that was like in the middle of nowhere. And all of a sudden, the scout comes out of the bushes with carrying this like giant Sherpa pack with all this gear. And I go, who's that? And it was one of the scouts. I don't remember the guy's name, but he had so much gear he carried it. He had every piece of snow gear imaginable. And I was like, uh, how are you going to carry that stuff out? But, it, you know, he got up, he got it there, he packed it out. And I was impressed because I like gear too, but he had me beat by, uh, by a mile. So uh, that scout was very well prepared. Chris did a good job. Um, so, uh, but I want to thank the parents that put this event together because we had a lot of work that needed to be done. So I want to thank, if you can stand up, uh, Lucy Reagan, please stand. Bill Dennis, Michael Arroyo, Matt Hyena, David Choi, Joko Long, Thomas and Cecilia Park, uh, Crystal uh, Col Cold Iron, uh, Ron Wanglin, and uh, the superstars Sarah Newman and Janine Lee. So, <laughs> so the, the team worked really hard, and if you ever want to plan a party, talk to Sarah, talk to Janine. They'll do 90% of the work for you, so it was fun. It was a lot of work though, so, but we, we, we were tough through it. So let me tell you about the story how I, I became involved with 438. So I was part of the 629 pack, and uh, I somehow became the scoutmaster. Uh, the, the rule is if you miss a meeting, a parent meeting, somehow you get nominated for positions. Okay, so. And then they nominate you and say, oh, you don't have to do anything, right? Anyway, so I became the Scoutmaster uh, for 629, following Ron Weinberg's footsteps, which is a huge, huge shoes to follow. I always say I never filled them, because he has a big foot. Um, but uh, when his son transitioned over to Scouts, I asked Ron, I go, hey, Ron, where are your boys going? Where are you going to go true? Because I had no idea where to go. So. He, he comes up and he goes, look, Joe, this is what you got to do. 438 is by far the best troop. He said, he basically said that uh, the troop master is extremely knowledgeable, okay? He's a great leader, and he's been doing it for 35 years, okay? And I was like, wow, that guy must be a superstar. And he's like, I'm in, I'm going. And then after a while, I was thinking, 35 years, that's a lot of time. And I was thinking, doesn't he have anything else to do? <laughs> you know, because most of us in Scout, the minute our kids are done, it's like, see you later. And then my, but uh, he's still there. So uh, I was always amazed at uh, how he could, could do that. You know, so I 
I thought, well, you know, 35 years, uh, that's, that's amazing. So, um, and that brings us to today, you know, we, we basically wanted to create a celebration, and part of the celebration is we had to get history so we could make nice speeches, and I understand his history. And there's a lot of history that goes on with, with Chris, and I got to ask him a bunch of questions as we gathered intel. And the one question I always wanted to ask him is, you know, why did you do this for 35 years? And I was really expecting some grandiose, you know, earth-shattering, eye-opening answer. And you know what he told me? He said, I don't have anything else better to do. You know, so I was like, that's so, that's not right. I, I don't know if he was kidding, but the, the answer kind of shocked me, so I was afraid to ask another question, because I probably couldn't handle the truth, so I just stopped talking to him. So that was kind of giggling inside. I thought that was kind of funny. But as we know, uh, actions always speak louder than words. Well, he said, probably joking, I couldn't tell that he had nothing better to do. Uh, his actions are far beyond, I got, what he told me, okay? So, um, what I want to do is talk about some of Chris's accomplishments. Uh, so now we're celebrating his 40th anniversary for leading a scout troop, but in reality, he led another troop before he got here. So he actually has 48 years of leadership, Chris? Is that correct? 48? Yeah, and 48 is, is a lot, so it's amazing. I mean, most people, that's like three or four careers, you know, it's a long time. Uh, not only have you had 40 years of leadership, uh, you, you've been very successful in what you do. So uh, as far as scouts, you've helped scouts, at least in 438, about 154 eagles have passed through this troop. Um, and Per the statistics, uh, only 46% of all scouts make it to Eagle, right? So that's a very small percentage. But 438, under the leadership of Chris, uh, as of 2018, we're gonna do a 2018 and then a, 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 a later one, he was at 40% Eagle Scout rank achievement. So that is a testament to your leadership into your passion, and I know, Chris, when, when you, our scouts become eagles, I know you're very proud of them. You're proud of all the scouts, and I saw the happiness that brings you uh, in your life when a scout attains an eagle rank, okay? So currently, with COVID, obviously we had a break, and currently we're at 30%, okay? But we have about 10 uh, life scouts that are in the wings, ready to transition to eagles, so, Chris, I know you say you have nothing better to do, but what's the, what's better than creating the leaders of the future, right? That's what you do, and thank you very much. Thank you, Joe, for sharing. I appreciate that. Uh, first, I'm going to read some stuff um, that my mom wrote. I figured that's a great way to start. Um, and then answering a few of part, I actually talk about why I think he's involved in Scouts and why he's been involved for so long. And uh, he's not one to overshare, uh, not the most emotional person, uh, but the idea of service uh, will, be, will be talked a lot about. So first up, uh, this is written uh, from my mom uh, to you. So uh, this is, she's sitting behind him over there. So uh, she said, from the moment I met Chris, met and married Chris, I knew he was a scout at heart. I recognized his love of scouting, but it wasn't until one summer, over 20 years ago, I really understood the qualities Chris brings to scouting. Chris was injured and unable to go to Parsons for the week. There were only two other adults going uh, and that went to Parsons. So we needed another adult and that's why I went. While I was there, I realized that Chris's patience and calm demeanor enabled these young men in his troop to learn the values that scouting instilled. His understanding of what each individual scout needed was essential to each scout's progress. I'll be happy to never go to summer camp again, but I'm so grateful that I could witness firsthand what Chris brings to scouting through, and through the years of my admiration for his commitment to young people and sharing his innate scouting qualities has grown. So that's from my mom, so thank you, Dad. All right, then from what I wanted to share, um, I'm, a, I'm a new father. But my first question, Dad, um, how old were you when you got your Eagle Scout? 
you remember how old you were? 13? 13. So, I remember for the longest time, and uh, I just recently reached out to the National Eagle Scout Association, because I thought um, I got it before him, and I was set, I got it at 13 younger than him, uh, and I was wrong. I, he got it before me. I was, uh, I was a little over 14, so, um, Dad, you won. I know you're competitive, so, um, <laughs> just like grateful. I thought you'd like that I reached out and, uh, and, and failed. I wanted to have this be like something that they sent me like a quote about me getting it earlier. Uh, and I was, I was very sad my memory failed. So. Um, but yeah, just a, a big thing um, is that as I get older uh, and have become a father, I've started thinking about the lessons I want my sons uh, to take from me. We have one here and one that's coming in the door right now. So. Um, there are a few key ideas that I believe my dad has taught me and the lessons that I plan on sharing with my children as they get older. I've also realized there are lessons that I already use uh, when I'm coaching and working with kids. The first idea that is at the forefront of his dedication um, is his dedication to service. So he may say, he may say that he doesn't believe that he, this is something he just um, has time for, but um, his dedication to service is something that's always there. So whether it's being a scout master for 48 years, doing work projects at Camp Parsons, or being involved in church, my dad has always made it clear that service for others is vital to being the best human you can be. Uh, this was back when I was in middle school. There was a Father's Day where he volunteered us to do a project of cleaning up a road near a hiking trail. Um, this is what he selected to do on his Father's Day for his present. Not going to see the Mariners game, not going out to eat. Instead, he wanted to go and clean up an area that was neglected that no one really went to. This memory leads to my second idea, which is to work hard and complete a task and to not complain when it is more difficult than you originally expect. When we were cleaning that road, it was pouring down rain the entire time. We picked up garbage and other random things in the mud and cold. He didn't complain once. We were the only people there. He just completed the work and made that road become a beautiful road leading to the trailhead for a beautiful hike. I'm sure I was difficult that day as a middle schooler. Uh, probably whining about cleaning something that I didn't see anyone else helping with, but that memory has stuck with me as I've gotten older. Now that I work with kids every single day, I think about his lesson of not complaining, um, and that's what I use to get them uh, to appreciate the work that it takes to become successful at something. Things that come easy don't leave a lasting memory. It's why I think my dad wants to continue being a scoutmaster to help boys reach their full potential of working towards tasks that will have many hurdles. Becoming an Eagle Scout is not an easy thing. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of working with other people. Um, and I credit my mom, I love my dad, but I credit my mom with, with getting my Eagle Scout um, as my dad was treating us all equally. <laughs> Another idea, uh, this leads into my next idea, is that um, I've always appreciated that you've treated everyone equally. I didn't get special treatment when I was trying to become an Eagle, um, and I, I depended on mom, and that was because you believed that everyone was equal. Uh, when you join Scouts, not everyone will get to the rank of Eagle Scout. I believe my dad sees that everyone is capable of reaching that point if they're willing to put in the work. It can be easy being a father, husband, and Scout Master. When I was younger, there were some times where I was hoping for special treatment, uh, but you had the same expectations for everyone. Now that I work at a school where I teach and coach boys right around the age of when you become Boy Scout, uh, it has made me appreciate everything you've done for me even more. Kids don't always want to listen, uh, but I've learned through uh, though they might not immediately respond to a conversation, many of them will look back on their experiences as a key point uh, for them in deciding what type of man they will become. Some, kid, some of the kids I first taught 10 years ago um, are now graduating from college, uh, and I've been able, fortunate enough to see them as they've been older, uh, and they've shared some of their memories of the lessons that I tried to teach, uh, and those lessons were key memories from what you tried to teach me. So one final idea I appreciated learning from you uh, was about accountability. Scouts always gave me the opportunity to figure out what my values were. Working hard and holding yourself accountable were key. Uh, and it wasn't true that I was always accountable. I believe uh, the two people in this story are both outside being dads. So this is good, but um, this is about us not being accountable. Uh, so one year, we were at Mount Rainier for igloo camping. Uh, three of my friends and I, um, <clears throat> we decided rather than building our igloo, we thought it'd be fun uh, to go explore. Uh, we found this 25-foot cliff uh, that we could jump off of and into some deep, steep powder. Um, so we decided this would be a fun adventure. 
We obviously had Tim Reeves jump first. Um, his parents are lawyers, and uh, he was the most reckless of our friend group, so <laughs> it was safe. Um, so he jumped, went into his face. Uh, we dug him out, and it was, it was okay. Everyone was okay. So we did that for the entire afternoon rather than building an igloo. Um, so it became afternoon and evening, and it became very clear we were not going to have an igloo completed. Um, but luckily there was another scout troop that came up. Those kids worked hard, but they weren't comfortable sleeping overnight um, in the igloo, so they left, and two of us got to sleep in it. <laughs> so there was no accountability for us. That was for, if Kyle's in here, he probably has stepped outside, but the two of us got to sleep in the igloo. Our other two friends slept in tents. Uh, it snowed about two feet that night. Their tents broke. They had to go into paradise, uh, into the bathrooms, and they slept in the bathrooms overnight. So that was, that was very fun. This was supposed to be about being accountable. I avoided the accountability there, but it was still fun for me for that memory. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's just really important for me to, to come up here and share. Um, I don't often get to tell you these things about how much I appreciate everything you've done for me. And there's many more lessons that you've taught me, uh, but this is where we're going to stop. I don't often express my appreciation for all that you've done in becoming the man and father that I am, but I am forever grateful. I love you, and I know that everyone here loves you and respects everything you've done in service for them. Thanks for being such a dedicated scoutmaster and a man that we can all look up to. Thanks, Dad. To Seattle Council over in Seattle, um, and my role is primarily to provide support for all the troops and the PACs and all the other scouting units in our area. Um, so I have known Chris for five years since I started working here, and I have to say I'm always in awe of all of our volunteers. Uh, the selfless time and energy and money that they put into scouting and into our scouts always is, amazes me. Um, but, and I was sitting here racking my brain trying to figure out how to put into words what 40 years of Scoutmaster looks like and means, and I realized this room shows it. When you look around all these people here, you have touched all of these lives and you've got all different ages and all different generations and they're here because of you so thank you from from me and from chief seattle council for all of your 40 years of service a brand new scout just a few years after chris took over the troop so i believe i'm trying to trace back i think it was 86 summer of 86 and uh you know, the, the amount of time that you're actually in a troop is not that long. So, 86, I was trying to add it up, and then I got my eagle and moved on in 92. Six years, but six years, that is really important in the life of a young man. And the role models that he sees, male role models, strong male role models, are really important. And... Chris, in his uh, actions, not as much words as many people have already kind of alluded to. <laughs> and that's how he goes ahead. He charges through his actions. <laughs> so he knows what needs to be done, especially now, 40 years in. But even as a younger Scoutmaster, he already, he already understood young men, and he understood what young men needed, and he understood that it needed to be a community effort. And so his ability to draw people together for the success of young men um, in my own life, and I think in the lives of many of these young men, kind of is unparalleled. And uh, I still remember the words he said at my Eagle ceremony in 92. And he made a reference to the fact that scouting is like a bank and that you deposit into the lives of young men. And it's interesting, Justin, to hear that you have become a teacher because I'm also an educator. And it's through Chris's example, I feel for my life, that I then decided to pursue teaching and again, in service, give back and work towards the development of citizens that are capable, prepared, and have a deep love and caring for this country and the citizens of our country. And so, Chris, I feel like I owe a lot to you. So thank you so much for your quiet, persevering attitude and selflessness. Thank you so much for your investment. That was Joel Eilers.
It's on. Hello. <laughs> My name is Penny Longhorn, and our relationship with the Myers family dates back to 1988. I was being tagged to be the president of the Sunset Elementary PTA, and I said, I can't do this job alone. I have to find somebody. And um, I found Pam. They nominated her. She had no idea where the nomination came from. And the reason why she was nominated was she was there to the bitter end of every single event we held at school. She worked hard. And that's clearly a family value of the Myers. So I said, you talk to her. So at some point, we are at the PTA convention in Spokane. She says, you know, I pretty much put this whole thing together, but I haven't quite figured out how I got this job. I made sure I was on, uh, she was on the lakeside, as I told her, and broke the news to her how she had garnered this job as co-president. We couldn't have done it without her. She's a phenomenal woman, and I watched her support Chris. So, of course, what did she do? She brought us along. We had two boys, 10 years apart, so as one left, another one rolled in the door. So Chris got a lot of the Longhorn family for quite some time. And I learned something from Chris, that there are actually 14 points to the scout law. One is a scout is always flexible. He believed in boy-centered leadership, so that meant he had to be wildly flexible. And he would give the boys the budget to go shopping, and they'd be so excited to, to uh, shop for the weekend, thinking, three days of Cocoa Puffs. That's what we're gonna have. He, he was flexible enough to put up with three days of meals of Cocoa Puffs. They learned very quickly that the diet needed to be a little more well-rounded. So his um, ability to be flexible and understand the 14th law of scouting is that a scout is always hungry. Those felt, they, they just, they need to be added to those 12 points of the law. And as Pam reminded me this evening, she says, I'm so glad we found you and you'd be able to come because Chris did crossovers for our sons and a number of other events. And she says, actually, you spent more of our anniversaries with Chris than I have. So <laughs> thank you, Chris. Thank you, Pam, for a lifetime of memories and impact to our family. Job well done. If you don't know me, I'm uh, Troop 438's 141st Eagle Scout. I crossed over and joined Troop 438 in spring of 2014, which to some people doesn't seem like a long time ago, but thinking about it earlier today, I've, almost, I've been in the Troop for almost 10 years, which kind of blew my mind earlier. Um, but Mr. Myers has taught me, and I know other Scouts, so much. And thinking about that 4% of it, all scouts that become Eagle. I know that I crossed over with nine of my friends from Pack 629 here at Somerset, and I almost almost half of us finished our Eagle, and that just shows that goes to show how much effort Mr. Myers has put into all of us and making sure we learned we learned from our mistakes and grew from our experiences. I remember one experience I've had at summer camp where me and a couple of other scouts stayed out too late and got kind of yelled at coming back that night. I thought it was just a mistake that I had made and something I would move on from, but little did I know that being held accountable was a major part of being a scout. Having gone through leading an Eagle Scout project at this school in the back, knowing that being able, for, being able to have people rely on you and being consistent and being able to finish a job was a major important role that being a scout had. These experiences have taught me several points of leadership, as well as taught me that there's more to being a scout than just having a label next to you that said Eagle Scout. All the leadership experience and all the past experiences I've had through scouting has helped me grow as a person just starting college and joining clubs and making new friends. So I know I can say for myself and as other for other scouts my age, younger and older, we can we say sincerely thank you to Mr. Myers for all that you've taught us.
I'm uh, Dave Vossler, and uh, uh, I had a son, I have a son right there, John, who is an uh, Eagle Scout. I'm not sure which number one, but uh, which number Eagle he was. But uh, uh, Chris, I just want to say um, what you taught me as an adult. And uh, I know I've known Chris uh, since uh, 2001. Uh, joined the troop, became assistant scoutmaster, and the privilege of working with him and uh, the late Joe LaMonica, two of the uh, giant, the biggest men in the world. Uh, you guys were just awesome. And just, I mean, I know you've taught, you've heard how much you've taught all the scouts, right? But you have taught me uh, about leadership, about strength, about honesty. The lessons were so strong. Um, all I can say is thanks, Chris. You're, you're a giant among you men, so thank you.